Are we uh, recording or we're all yep. going? Yep. All right. So call the meeting to order and ask for roll call if it would, sir. Mm -hmm. Here. Falk. Here. Crawford. Here. Andreiser. Here. Nicole Here. Here. Okay. Item number two on our agenda tonight is approval of, of uh, the agenda. Um, does anybody have any corrections, additions, or comments on what is in front of us tonight's agenda? I move we approve the agenda as submitted. Okay. I'll oh, And first on Kate and Jim. Oh, a second. Lose track whether we vote or lose vote on this one, right? Yep. Do you have to call roll call or just do a no, just vote? Voice okay, vote. all favor favor signify by saying aye. 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 Pause. Okay. All right. Um rule of minutes uh, from the April 13th regular meeting. We had a, a number of applications, so uh they're extensive. Is a little bit as far as uh, some different uh, different issues that we work through. Did anybody have any changes or comments to what minutes were published in front of us? I had one at the top of page five, standard one. Yes, that's I think the same one. Oh, same one I had. Yeah, yes. I figured and Jim would have got it. Find that, and we will do correct that. Okay, okay. awesome. Yeah. Or not, we will correct it to the standard is not, not meant. met. Right. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. It's a very important word. Yeah. <laughs> for some exactly. reason, I had it written down as it was met. I don't know why. So <laughs> thank you for correcting. For the applicant wishes it wasn't <laughs> there. But so, uh, okay. Yeah, so that is noted on page five. Any, um, any other? I had nothing else on that one. Else? Anyone else have anything? I did. Um, pretty well done, other than yeah, sometimes it these are just a word, but yeah. you got to watch those important words. Um, may I ask for a motion to approve the minutes from the April 13th? Record? I'll make a motion to approve those minutes. Okay. Motion is from Dick Bont. Support. And support by Kate. I'll. All in favor of approving the minutes as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 April 13th minutes are approved as amended. And then uh, we also had a special meeting on May 18th, which was a uh, training session, informative, we might say, which I again like to compliment. Uh, the staff for putting this together it was very very informative those that made it and uh, well done and also for following up with the uh, hard copy for us that was mm -hmm. good to have so um we have in front of us the minutes from that which was rather simple <laughs> um, it was up there <laughs> it was it was it was a formality i would think we would say uh, as as actually making it a, a formal meeting but uh, we did go through the the procedures, and um, there anyone has any comments on that? If not, I would ask for a motion to approve the May 18th, 2023 special meeting. So I'll move. Richard. Second. Richard and Richard. Uh, <laughs> ah. Ah. Uh, didn't think of that. Uh -huh. All right. True. All right, so we have a motion and a second to approve the May 18th, 23 minutes. Uh, if, if we'll ask if, well, if you're in favor for approving them, signify by saying aye. 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 <clears throat> approve the minutes of the May 18th special meeting. That takes us to item number four, public comments. Um, at this point, we Ask the public, or I don't know if we're doing any Zoom tonight or any, nope, nobody on tonight. Um, if there is anything you would like to speak about, uh, this could be related to uh, the application. It could be tonight's agenda. It could be anything you care to speak about. Um, so now is the time to, to do so and introduce yourself and speak for three minutes or less. 
this. Um, for those of you who don't know, can we ask Ann? Can we ask you to maybe come up just so that it's, it's recorded and there is a microphone there? So we'd like to. <clears throat> um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ann Guild. I live just south of and on top of the proposed house at 184 Park. I'm mostly here to see if I can gather more information about this. I know that on your agenda today, you are going to take action on the setback variance on Vine Street, which I don't think affects me. I'm actually more worried about when they start building, whether my house is gonna settle or fall. I doubt it'll fall, but um, I just thought it would be useful to get a little more information. So that's why I'm here. Okay, well, thank you. That was less than three minutes. <laughs> All right. Um, anyone else other than we'll say the applicant who may want to present when we get into that, but uh, is there anyone else that has any comments that they'd like to make? Okay. All right. Then we'll move on from public comments. Uh, item four, move to item five, unfinished business, which is none. So that's pretty pretty easy. And then we got to item six of new business, which is 184 Park Street application, which is requiring a front yard setback, I believe on Vine Street. Pull up page yeah, slide six. Put it. 26. Um, at that point, I would like to ask for the... Uh, the uh, I zoom in a little bit on well, public meeting. That part? Yeah, yeah, hearing is called. Yeah, I, I need I need to call the hearing to order by the chair on, as far as the, the actual public hearing section of this application and ask for a summary of the administrator zoning administrator for the applicant, if you would. Certainly, Mr. Applic chair. Application, sorry. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the applicant, uh, uh, Damstra Consulting, on behalf of the owners, uh, Patricia uh, Galian, uh, is requesting a dimensional variance to construct a new dwelling uh, at 184 Park Street, uh, which requires a reduced front setback uh, of 15 feet instead of the minimum 25 foot setback from the Vine Street right of way. Um, this is a re reduction of uh, 10 feet. Um, so, just a note this is actually a corner lot, so we have two front. Um, you know, setbacks that, that we're working with here uh, at this point. So uh, I'm sure some of you uh, are aware of this uh, particular site because of uh, reviewing this during past uh, ZBA cases, but if not, uh, uh, quite a uh, unique site, uh, challenging site, uh, perhaps. Uh, the lot's approximately 100 feet wide and 294 feet deep, um, just over a half uh, acre in size. Um, uh, ZBA has previously granted uh, variances for this property, but all of them have expired. In this case, it's a uh, newer owner that's that's applying for a setback variance uh, in this case. Uh, most recently in 2021, a front setback variance from the Vine Street right away was granted for a 15-foot setback, which was a reduction of uh, 10 feet. Um, in that particular case, the, the house was oriented a little bit more, so kind of the entire northern side of the home was actually going to be in the front setback area, whereas uh, the plan that's before you by this applicant kind of shows that 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 triangle, that smaller triangle portion within uh, encroaching into the setback area. Uh, the applicant uh, has uh, already received uh, their eagle approvals. So there's some steep slope uh, related issues on sites uh, that, that that presents some limitations as far as maybe you know where they can place the structure. So eagles taking a look at some of those pieces. Um, other than that, I think the applicant's probably best to uh, present their application and and request and provide more detail. Okay, thanks for the highlights and summary there, Ryan. So at that point, I would ask the um, if the applicant if would like to make any kind of presentation or information for for the board. Absolutely. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Doug Damster. I uh, I run Damster Consulting. I'm here on behalf of Patricia Gallion uh, and Skippers Construction. Um, I was uh, was hired to take care of their their due diligence permitting uh, utilities things like that. And in this case, because of the uh, um, uh, the variance required, um, I was uh, tasked with taking care of this as well. Now, this is something that unfortunately, um, there was a, 
well, there have been three previous variances on the books that have been approved, uh, the most recent in 21. Uh, we had originally hoped, in fact, that we might have gotten an extension, however, uh, with, with Ryan's uh, guidance, uh, realized that unfortunately a, an, expires, an expired variance could not be extended. Uh, so we applied for, uh, for a new variance. Now this was, this was very much uh, dictated by um, Holland Engineering's, uh, the way that they designed uh, to, to uh, the, maximum, uh, the maximum least impact on the property, on the parcel uh, from an engineering standpoint, and then also with Eagle's guidance. So at this point, um, because of the grade, because of the steep grade on this particular property, really we are going, we are using their guidance to locate it in the optimal position um, to be able to, to make this particular one work. Now with Ryan's, um, Ryan had also pointed out, we did have a little bit of a mis, uh, misunderstanding about the front setback on Park Street. We were, under the impression that the front setback, if I can point it out, that this setback was also 25 feet. And apparently that is not the case. That front set, setback can actually be 10 feet. However, this particular corner is an individual lot and that is owned by Kalamazoo Lake Sewer and Water Authority. There is a big barbed wire fence surrounding that um, at this point. It doesn't make necessarily an impact on the variance, but at the same time, the client would prefer not to have their deck hanging out over the front, or over the top of the, of the pump station. So, but again, the location of this house is really dictated by Eagle and by uh, Holland Engineering as far as location. Now, one question that came up regarding uh, impact to neighboring properties. One thing that will occur, um, they will be driving uh, steel retention sheets into the ground to uh, to prevent any overdigging on this part uh, during excavation. So in some locations along here and along the back, they'll be driving in steel to make sure that there's no way that that grade, that that uh, hill can fall down into the excavation site. And then it will be backfilled to ensure that everything remains the same. So. Um, there was also some confusion on this. These two, I had interpreted potentially to be wing walls. Those are not wing walls. There will not be any addition, reten additional retention walls as part, of, as part of the foundation on this. So we have applied for a 15 foot setback because the previous variance was with a 15 foot setback. That had never been approved by Eagle. It, it was great that it was approved, but whether or not it actually ever would, would have been built is, is unlikely because of the fact that it had never been approved. At this point, this is fully ready to go, of course, subject to your approval. Sir? Yes. What, what are the small circles uh, in front of the house towards Park Street? Are you talking about here? Yes. I believe that's just uh, um, uh, foliage. Uh, um, Plants, um, just landscaping. Yes. Or... Okay. I do not know that that was uh, that was something that, like, that we were tasked with as far as uh, smiley faces landscaping. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, we also did just get full approval from the fire department. There was some confusion about whether or not that was going to be any kind of a problem, but we made sure we met the minimum expectations, even though. It's within 100 feet of the roadway. Um, Chris still wanted for us to make sure that we had a, a way to meet the, the expectations. We met the minimum width as far as zoning for each individual parking spot, two off street parking spots um, for this particular property. Um, and of course, trying to minimize impact to the lot. If I recall, Vine Street's always been the, considered the, the front yard, even prior. Is that correct? In our other, uh, you know, well, it's a well, corner, so they both are right. Well, you sometimes it's, I can't remember exactly. Sometimes you, when you have a corner, you, you choose depending on your address or depending on how you choose a front yard. It used to be, but I'm not sure what determines it anymore. Ryan, do you have an answer on that? Yeah. So, yeah, if you're on a corner lot, you have two front yards at that point. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so they're both choosing they're front yards. Declaring their close 25 feet. Right, so the setback on both of those on Vine Streets and along Park Street. Yep. Got it. Okay. 
Now it is also unusual because of the way the, the original uh, shape of this lot with how vine cuts right down, right onto the lot line for this. It is interesting because we have this little pizza slice. So, I mean, realistically, we would not be encroaching upon another neighboring lot in any way. I don't know if that helps make it a little bit easier when we talk about we're asking for a little bit of that space, but we still have a significant amount of, uh, of space between that corner, which is just that little mm -hmm. pie slice um, into the, to the setback. And if I recall, the other applications entered were entering from Vine, not down from Park. The one from 2021 was actually that coming was from Park. Park yet. Yeah. And that was that was a full driveway. And oh, that was actually right. positioned very east west right up here. I think one or what before prior may have been up on line. That yeah, that's very possible. It seems like you're a little further down the hill on this one, or maybe we're there's... pretty much right into the the V. Yeah. To again minimal impact on on either one of the the slopes on either side. Are the um... The retention walls part of Eagle's restrictions or just part of your construction scroll down, uh, standard? Ultimately, those are, it's an Eagle requirement. It, it is, is something, an Eagle requirement. It's still a great idea. And in, in any tight uh, parcel like this, it's great to make sure we minimize overdigging. So it's it's still a great thing to do. But in this no, case, yeah, it's, I understand. It's, I just it's would, in. would the, think they're, they're, you're protecting, they're asking you to protect an all and, and you know, so. Right. It's part of where they'll let you do and what they'll let you do. What's this slide showing us? So you can kind of see where the steep slopes are at, where they're they're kind of trying to get it right between those two particular. Yeah. Can you see? Okay. Yeah, that does make it even more a tight space. Yeah. You think this will happen? <laughs> uh, permits. The only thing I have to do is submit zoning and building, but all the rest of the permits are, are ready. So we're hoping to start now, out of this month. Beginning I, mean, I hope they do. I'd, I'd like to see somebody yeah, there have been some use a lot. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've, we've hoped for nice improvements. Uh, it's a Yeah, we'd, a like to see a, we'd like to see a building, a house there. <laughs> it's been years. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, I was just not, I know you don't, maybe not, you don't control that. I'm just asking, but. I've, uh, uh, I previously was employed by 42 North Custom Homes, and I dealt with a number of potential clients who looked at this property, and we tried to find ways to potentially make it work going back into 2017, 2018. So it's been a, it's been a long time. Yeah, okay. It's a tough one. Um, all right. Well, it's a, it's a nice property. It's a challenge. Sure. Well, let's see. Anything else that you have or right now can think of that I, you would I like to share? did a great job of... of um, Setting it up, uh, obviously, you can just see with the elevation change with the grade. Um, I, I think it's the the best solution for this particular parcel. Yeah, I think we can. Um, while we have you up there, we not that your application uh, is is only for a dimensional set, yeah, setback, but there is a is, is an overall height issue with the with the project from what I looked at. So. Based on average grade, based on yeah. yes, for what you post as a as an average. Well, you post a mid grade, and that gets to debated whether well, mid and average how they do an average. But anyway, you're you're ten ten in, ten and some inches over. Okay, okay. Um, the nine twelve top part. We I noticed you have like a you know a ten foot basement, and then an eight foot mid section. And then a pretty good height, you know, upper lofty, you know, with, with right. scissor trusses and and all, which right. is cool. Right. Uh, but it it does get over that. Now that's that's not what you're asking for tonight. We're not here to judge on that. Right. But um, the the midpoint of your roof falls less than the 28 feet according to the drawing. Right. But there is a 32 foot max height cap. And yeah, overall, it's an overall. But your mid, there is a mid number like. 28 and then a 32 overall. Okay. So it's just your just your overall. Okay. Okay. So who is going to approve that or reject that? Yeah. So the applicant hasn't submitted for zoning review yet. So okay. our review has been limited to, you yeah, know, yeah. just his variance requests. So we would, you know, check for, you know, height compliance once that's submitted. And gotcha. I'm sure at, after this meeting, he's going to yeah. double check I, those things. So drive it back to the designer and basically say we're going to have to reduce pitch and figure yeah. out what we're going to do to drop that down to where it needs yeah. to be. 
I mean, generally when we approve, not a, if we deny, we deny. If we approve, a lot of, I mean, we will make sure that we reference that it meets all other, you know, standards, conditions anyway. Absolutely. So that would never fall under that if it mm -hmm. was to go that way. So, okay. Very good. Well, thank you, Doug. Thank Appreciate you it. Well, we may have some more questions as we deliberate and go into our private dis discussion. Right. And I won't go anywhere. Okay. It's it's a very nice package. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yes, thank yeah, you. The architect did a nice job. Your details. Well, okay. Um, here we go. Um, let's... Uh, Let's talk any any comments about what you know Doug had to talk to us about. Um, we had, of course, one one public comment um, from Ann as a concern of uh, structure of you know the soils and and all that stuff, um, which is good. I don't I did not have any other communications that we noticed from either written or verbal or any other communications, right? Correct, Mr. Chair. I did not receive any additional correspondence. No, no public comments around the, the application. Yes. Would it would it be good to know or find out since Ann had made that concern whether she feels okay with what the drawing is um, from a public standpoint? Um, does she feel okay that the construction and design would not interfere or affect what you're Talking. Okay. You comfortable? You comfortable? That's okay. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. I just want to make sure, from a standpoint yeah. of a neighbor, I can understand concerned. Ann's point. I mean, but um, I guess not speaking for you, Ann, but. You know, the reference was that there is detention uh, walls and steel yeah. pilings going in that would be like a, a breakwater wall and to retain that hill. Um, not just something that's, they're not just trying to put some cement blocks up there. <laughs> so those who go in during construction, during the excavation phase, to ensure that there is no movement of, of grade or just on the hill. And then the point where the foundations put back in, the backfill. Backfill. Back so, yeah, yeah. Those, those, would, those are not going to be allowed. No. It's temporary. I see. Okay. All right. That helped. I yeah. Think. And thanks, yeah, Dick, for making sure. All right. Well, then. Um, Let's move on from our public comment uh, as far as anyone is for or against it and uh, talk about what we think. Any Anyone have a, well, let me say this. Um, we don't probably don't have to beat to death the fact that it is a challenging lot and an, uh one that meets has to meet a lot of requirements even to get to this level with Eagle uh, approval. And from not not that every every one of these applications are different and they stand on their on their own self. It's not like we get it before it doesn't mean we do this one. Um, it does it does reference in a sense that uh, not to stereotype or 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 give some kind of a, a setting that it it automatically happens but it the reference from before was very similar that, that the lot is someone has to really go get pretty creative to even build on this lot but let alone try to meet all the setbacks so um if we happen to to look at something like this and feel that it is minimized and it meets most of the most of the standards it's uh May not we may not find it too difficult in going through our standards that it you know it, it has similar similarities to what we'd looked at before. Well, looking at uh, I guess well if some of us have been at the 2016, the 2018, and the 20 <laughs> all three of them, and then sitting here looking at this, I think they've done the package they put together and design. Bob, I think, is has been quite exceptional. That's my 
my thought on it um, and knowing that um, from a construction standpoint, Jim, I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but. Uh, I think it's going to be a beautiful home. I, yeah, I, my only, I look. My, my only sticking point was the height, which is, should be easily addressed. I did go up and walk Vine Street and saw the area. I saw where they've got it staked out. It doesn't, it, it doesn't appear that it would be anything that would obstruct the view for any of the neighbors because it's it's kind of down in the valley. Down in the valley. Um, mm -hmm. And I, th I think they've done a, a good job of trying, like they said, minimize the impact to the lot. Um, anything they can do to save every tree they can save is certainly a good thing. I see a lot of them on this drawing. Um, so I, d I don't see the setback being an issue. Um, the, the previous setbacks that we gave, yes, it's the same lot, but this is a completely different plan, mm -hmm. a completely different location. And, you know, because we gave a variance in the past, there is no precedence no. for variances. Um, but just looking at this one on its own, um, I think they've done a nice job of packaging this in and a 15 foot variance wouldn't be a problem for the neighbor. Mm -hmm. No, that's why I was referencing, or, uh, excuse me, referencing 10, 10 the previous variance. ones as compared. I think he did a fabulous job of putting this together. But you're right, the height thing is the only thing. And I think that could be, like he's saying, going back to, to correcting those things. Yeah. And I don't know if anybody did the calculations, but the drawing shows about a seven and a half foot variance, but they're asking for 10 for, for leeway, I understand, from my understanding. But a um, foot and a half there are two feet leeway as opposed to perfection. Mm -hmm. But uh, so that's the reason for the 10 foot drawing. One drawing calculation showed about a seven and a half foot, if I recall. Is that right? Correct. Well, actually, specifically, originally, because I misunderstood that I thought the wing wall for retention, as you can see, kind of coming off that north wall. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and oh, okay. I just wanted to make sure that at that point I was asking for a 10 foot variance to a 15 foot setback as opposed to just the six and a half to make sure that that wing wall had exist, that we were going to have a problem. Because foundation. Now, at this point, understand very quickly that if, if you want to use the minimum and you want to go with six and a half foot variance, that would work. But you know, we'd rather have just a little bit of flexibility to make sure that they're coming through. Yeah. The, the other thing that makes this uh, different is um, this one, there, that pie-shaped lot at the top belongs to Vine Street Cottages across the street. And we hadn't seen that before. I think one of the previous applicants was considering that to be their property. Um, but this is the proper description of that lot. Vine Street owns that piece of property, those cottages, well, that they're building on the road right across the street there. Mm -hmm. He bought all that from the camp and he got the, that, that section. So because that section is there from the road, the setback variance will be almost imperceptible because it's even further from the road with that, yeah. other, with that other property. Exactly, there. with the way it angles. Yeah. yeah. At that point, at that, yeah, at that point, yeah. Visually, it would look. That small piece of property can't be built on, could it? I didn't no, no, no. Big enough to build it. No, not, no, it can't. Not where the arrows are. Yeah. Or, no. Or no, you couldn't even put a garage yeah, there. I think so. Okay, uh, well, any other comments? If not, I'd like to proceed into going through the standards and working our way through our findings and thoughts. Anything other than that, guys? No. No. Okay. All right. Jim, I'm going to, Hunterizer, I'm going to include you for start with number one, even well, though you yeah. don't actually vote, no. but you do get to participate. He can talk, he can read it, right? Um, I would think that'd be a, probably a better question for your city attorney. I, I don't believe that uh, your alternate member can participate um, unless he's actually acting in his alternate role. Yeah, um, I, I just thought they could. But... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Sorry. certainly welcome to listen and, and be here, but right. yeah. Yep. And yeah. yeah, I get it. Yeah. But <laughs> not that we don't want to hear from Mr. Hunreiser, but. Uh, All right. So. <laughs> I was just trying to. Get somebody to, yeah, yep. In the past, we we had we we did ask have you know alternates have input. Okay, uh, gotcha. 
So it's not like they were use. <laughs> yeah, we did. In the they could they, give they input, could, they but could, could not vote. That's not a great idea. Is that correct? I don't think you can. My concern about having Right. Potentially. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm good. You're good, Jim. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're on you don't have to worry about stage fright then. Today. <laughs> then, Mr. Bond, let's have you start with number one. Then. The strict compliance with area setbacks, frontage, height, bulk, or density would unreasonably prevent the owner from using the property for a permitted purpose or would render conformity unnecessary burdensome. Well, he has, uh, in listening to Doug completion of the Eagle permit, um, the thing I like too of that, the city fire department had given their stamp approval working through all these things. Um, uh, that footprint would uh, unreasonably make it burdensome. I mean, it is unbelievable footprint to uh, to try and put a house in. So I would say that he would, uh, they would meet that requirement. Okay. Now that's my thought. Any other, any other input on what, what Dick responded to as far as, whether that's a, a meeting that standard or not. Um, because of Dick's comments and the comments included in the package for us here, I, I think that standard is met. I would think so that the, uh, it, it, you know, we, we, you always say it's something's somewhat not impossible, but when you realize that, that the, the restrictions that are put on somebody and what you try to do is is uh, is minimal on something like this. So that's that's where you're. But the restriction would never let never let anybody build would never on let that. anybody let do anything. Anybody build on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd, you'd end up with an outhouse, you know. So yeah. that's. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, anyway. I, a nice outhouse, but I mean, it'd be a nice. Well, house. I just like the design that they came up with to also to try and help put that in that, all right, to make it acceptable, all right, and make it reasonable that he could build on that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> well, we'll move around. Jim, would you like Mr. to do Mr. number Chair, two? If I could, too. This is a suggestion. This is we're all fresh off training and fresh in my mind, too. Um, you know, perhaps it'd be, you know, I, I think it might be beneficial just at the very least to make sure like on every standard, at least check with every member uh, to at least verbalize that they agree that it's met. So that way there's a, a, a clear, you know, a clear record. The clearest record would be to, you know, actually you know, make a motion and vote on each standard. But uh, at the very least, I would suggest at least that um, maybe checking with each member on each standard, just to um, that way it's crystal clear in every case kind of a thing. Okay. So. That's fine. Uh, then Richard. Uh, yes, I I'm in agreement that that the, the uh, that that uh, uh, that particular point of the variance is met. That uh, to come with strict compliance with with everything would be unnecessarily burdensome. There. All right, Miss Kate. I'm in agreement that that standard is met based on the comments in the memo. And Jim commented. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, I'm in agreement with that. And uh, I agree also with a yes on that. So thank okay. you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. All right. All right. Then, Mr. Bauk, well, how about if you'd like to do second standard? That a variance would do substantial justice to the owner as well as to other property owners in the district, or whether a lesser relaxation would give substantial relief and be more consistent with justice to others. And I want to clarify that we are talking about a 10 foot variance, which would give us a 15 foot setback. Um, only a small corner of the home would fall within the required 25 foot setback from Vine Street right away. However, the applicant simply cannot remove a small triangular portion of their home without altering the design 
compliance with the current city requirements and the Eagle approved location would require a greater footprint reduction than the small area within the setback. Um, this request is not extreme and only enough to construct a reasonable sized home on the property. Um, as such, the variance may give substantial relief to the applicant and allow for justice to the neighboring property owners. Uh, I think this standard is met. Go back my way and, and agree with those with those facts. I feel also that our earlier comment that the way that uh, the property and the road goes and the visual makes a big impact too, mm -hmm. as far as you know, as far as that type of a uh, closeness or approach. As in sometimes when our inner city blocks or you know someone is out of out of the line and things that you run into, that's not the case here. So, okay, I agree. Okay, I agree. The standard is met. Okay, I, I agree. The standard is met. And I like what Jim put in there that there is nothing said so far about the ten foot uh, variance for the fifteen foot setback, which he did mention. All right, make sure that that is in in our comments. Reference. So I do say that that would be met. Okay. All right. Uh, Kate, number three. So the plight of the owner is due to unique circumstances of the property and not to general neighborhood conditions. Uh, this site is unique based on a combination of factors. The corner <laughs> lot requires two front setbacks. The buildable area is constricted by steeper slopes to the southwest and northeast of the site. A pump station and barbed wire fence exists to the southeast, and the southern border of the lot jogs inward for a narrower width for approximately one third of the site. Um, well, I'm not sure the corner lot in itself would allow us to find that um, standard to be met. I agree with all the other um, justifications, and I believe that standard is met. Okay, Richard, your your uh, thoughts? Um, I I agree that that. Uh, that uh, is met. Uh, I did. Now, this is an aside that it actually it, it has to do with the barbed wire, uh, but I'm not going to pursue that at this point. It's just too bad that there's barbed wire there that wouldn't ordinarily be allowed by others, I don't believe, but that is probably because it's an essential public service uh, under the ordinance. That barbed wires may be allowed, but uh, I'm, I'm just not. I'm, I, I don't love that there's barbed wire there, but perhaps it's it's needed for security. I don't know. Just they, mm -hmm. at least it's not circular like some established. Not concertina <laughs> wire. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> might make some people feel at home. But <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dick Bond. I would, I would agree that that uh, it is met and is and to his comment, is it barbed wire that can be taken down and another type of fence being put up? Um, I don't know. Just that's completely yeah. different. Yeah. I think it's not. Yes, it's thank you. Yeah. Strike all these another comments day. from the record. Just an observation. Yeah. And Jim Bow. Within the city of Saugatuck, this is truly a unique lot, um, and I think the standard is met. It definitely falls into that word. Mm -hmm. it? Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. I agree. Also, that that's that's one of the one of the times where we have unusual topography, and we applaud people who, who are willing to try to figure out a way to do that. There are a few of those around here, especially over in that area. So. Okay, uh, number four, Richard, do you want to do the last one? Okay, that the problem, this Richard, okay, that the problem is not self-created or based on personal financial circumstances. The problem is not self-created as the conditions are unique as stated in standard number three and compliant placement and size of a home could be considered unnecessarily burdensome. Additionally, the variance request has no relationship to the project cost. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that assessment. Yeah, in this case, that one is sometimes that was one that's always hard to yeah. understand. In this case, when you get into these types of lots and situations, it reverses itself pretty easily. Um, 
I agree that, that it does meet that one. And I would I would agree that it's also met, Bob, and uh, what Richard has said. <laughs> yeah, they're certainly not asking for an oversized house or no. anything. No, outrageous. I mean footprints. Very little foot. Uh, reasonable. Setback. I mean, it's got a couple yeah. floors, which is fine, but it's, it's yeah. not. A, yeah. And uh, Jim. Oh, I agree. The standard is met. Okay, I, I think we all agree on that. Well, in in our review, um, it was pretty pretty clear that we we found that all four standards were met uh, based on the information pro provided to us uh, and all. And if uh, if we don't have any other types of concerns, questions, or thoughts that we feel we should bring up, I would ask for a motion based on our review and findings of fact that uh, we approve, approve the application as, as presented and as it meets building standards, of course. <laughs> yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I move to approve a variance to reduce the northern front setback from the Vine Street right of way from 25 feet to 15 feet for the construction of a new dwelling at 184 Park Street based on the positive findings documented in the staff memo provided to the ZBA for its June 8th, 2023 meeting, as well as the comments uh, made by the members of the board during the meeting as documented in the minutes. This approval is contingent upon the construction of the dwelling being in substantial conformance with the location, design, and size as proposed as an included in the ZBA variance application and that the height be in conformance with the city requirements. Support. Well, that's right. You added the height. Thank you. Being you in conformance the with the city requirements. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in general, meets all meets all of their standards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have uh, a motion by Kate, uh, Jim. supports, or the second, sorry, um, second from Kate, motion from Jim. Uh, any other thoughts, I guess, not before we go to roll call, so we can do that. Sarah? Uh, Bob? Yes. Bob? Yes. Uh, Crawford? Yes. Andreiser, I'm sorry, McClellan? Yes. And Yes. All right. So we voted and it has passed with uh, strong backing, I guess you might say, for, for the uh, application that has been presented to us. And uh, as we commented earlier, nice, a nice, a nice uh, set of documents for us to review. So our, again, our compliments to organizing something that's worth looking at and understanding. <laughs> so, um, so you can move along on your next journey with Ryan after this. So, so that, that would be great. Uh, okay, so um, that moves us on from the close of the hearing. And um, we'll move on to communications under number seven on the agenda. Uh, no additional communications, Mr. Chair. Okay. That's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah number eight is ZBA comments. Any comments that anybody has? Uh, no. I believe we've comp complimented and, and enjoyed the, the training session. Uh, and I believe it was great that we reached out to other zoning boards too. We had a little bit of yeah, and, participation there. And thank you that you put that in there. Since I was not there, I could review over it. So thank you yeah, very absolutely. much for that. I appreciated that one. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I know that was a lot of work by Ryan and Chris and yeah. Jake and yeah, those um, guys. It was it was a very good session. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. It was good for them too. <laughs> All right, uh, number nine is our public comments. This is the time where anyone in the audience would like to 
talk about something that they feel is important that they want to nothing no the fact that the historic society didn't give a vinyl siding variance to the uh new the building the old building we got <laughs> we paint the wood again i kind of like one, it. How it looks now yeah yeah one one question for doug are they serious about building this thing we've had a lot of people say <laughs> We give an approval. There's like a lot of money to put in. So I think you're not serious about this. <laughs> Waiting for this. I'm spending one of the uh, we'll have a conversation on Monday yeah. about paramounts and zoning. But are the people that own the lot want to build a house? They do want to do it. <laughs> Why else would you go? It's trouble. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Good. Nice We're done. Design. Thank you guys. All right. And Mr. Chair, if you could just have, yeah, do a motion and oh. uh, second to, to close. Oh. Yep. We have an adjourn. Yeah. Oh, motion to adjourn. Motion. Sure. I make a motion to adjourn. All right. I second. All right. Okay. The ours ours have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All, all those that are signified by saying aye. 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 Motion to adjourn. Passed. Now you can. Now we can. There we go. Good point. Good point. Brian, anything on the docket for July? Um, uh, not yet. Monday's the deadline. Heard that several so, ways over the uh, years, you know, that it's squeezing in at the end of the week. Somebody said it's not Monday. debatable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Gee, what a vacation for it you. It does seem weird <laughs> to have <laughs>